Good morning, everybody. This is Jen and Bunny, and we are here with a new video. This is not about bunnies, um, although Bunny wanted to be here to say hi. Yeah, I wanted to say hi. So, hi, you guys. I'll talk to you a little later. Okay, thank you, Bunny. Someone had asked me to uh, do a tutorial on how I make my grungy ephemera. Um, so I'm happy to do that. However, I'm not exactly sure what they want to see. I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into how I do some of the things I do, and maybe that will answer some questions. Um, First of all, I got these cards. They're playing cards at the dollar store. They came in a box, and it was a kid's game. Got them for a dollar. They're, you know, nice, I don't know, whatever you want to say, material or whatever. So, I use these to make, like, artist trading cards, although I think those are supposed to be closer to the size of maybe a, a regular playing card. But they're nice to stick inside um, of journals or use them as like a raggedy thing where you just put a whole bunch of stuff on it and then stick it in the middle of your journal to make it a little fuller or something. They're just fun. So when I start doing something like this, first of all, I cover this part and I cover it like with anything because I'm going to put a lot of layers on it, so it doesn't necessarily matter if it's good stuff or crummy stuff or interesting stuff or whatever, because you're not going to see most of it. So, hold on a second. <laughs> I told you, I'm not actually ready for this to happen. I mean, I don't have anything planned out, so we're going to learn as we go along together. Okay, I got this book. I think it came from my friend Angel in Vienna. She sends me the best kind of ephemera stuff. Um, old papers, old documents, old letters. And some of them I keep intact. And some of them I tear up for using for projects like this. Um, I have my Distress Collage Medium uh, Vintage from... Ranger. It's a Tim Holtz thing. And it's really gets gloopy after a while, but it's really nice because it already comes tinted to a vintage type color instead of having the white that dries clear. This one kind of dries over your paper and looks kind of vintagey. So you just cover the card with that take this, try and figure out about where you want it to hit. You don't want a lot of the plain um, border showing, you know, you, but you want to make sure you got your ends covered and all that kind of stuff. So you put that on and kind of push it down. You can use a brayer if you want, or you can just use your finger or a bone folder or something. Get the little air bubbles out of there, but a lot of them will go away on their own. So then you turn it over and just cut off the excess, or you can tear off the excess to make it look more distressed, or take a little sander and sand it off. But, you know, basically you can do this and then take a sander to it after you've already done this. I already did the back side, as you can see. Um, I have a whole um, bunch of pieces of stuff. Like, when I do a project, or like, like these little pieces here, I won't throw those away, because these are a really nice, pretty vintage color anyway. I will throw some of the tiny ones away. The problem is, some of them are very weak because this is such old paper that sometimes it will tear on its own. But for the most part, I save all the pieces, and at the end of each project, I collect them into like a little baggie like this, 
that has all kinds of pieces of paper and leftover string and I don't know, whatever. It just has a lot of stuff in it. And I probably have about, I don't know, 20 of these bags. And then when I get ready to start a new project, I just pull out a bag and then all of the little pieces of paper are there that I can use to piece onto one of these cards to use as my background. So that's what I did on this side. I used a lot of little tiny pieces. This side I used one big piece. It doesn't matter. You can do it however you want. The nice thing about this whole process is you can do whatever you want. This is my vintage photo and I ink everything so that it looks, you know, well worn and old. Um, you can put, uh, like squirt it with water and that will um, break down some of the fibers in the paper even further. But um, for what I need right now, I think this will be okay. So then um, a lot of times I will take like <sighs> these little, like little tiny pieces of cloth that I have used, like I've torn up for some other project. And I find that if you just stamp on them with something, I mean, I have a lot of stamps. I'm sure you all have old stamps that you use from time to time. And um, if you stamp on them, they actually work really well. This uh, stamp, I think this was from Stampin' Up! And it says authentic. And if you just put it on there... Press down, and there you go. Now it says authentic. And as you can see, we didn't use up the whole piece of fabric. So in that case, I would probably take something like this stamp, or you can see how messy my <laughs> stamps are. All of my stuff looks like this. My stuff does not stay clean and pristine by any stretch of the imagination. But anyway, if I do something like this and then just go ahead and stamp it, um, you can see that it kind of makes it, covers up that blank space and you can turn it different ways. And then if you've had enough of that, you can get a different stamp. Let me see what we got here. Um, this is a stamp that's... <laughs> Again, it's a mess. It's supposed to be uh, music notes. So I will just get part of it in there and stamp on it. And there you have some music notes. So your little tag says authentic, which you can still see. But then there's other stuff around the edges. And over here, I'll just stick another little, little thing. So all you got to do is just stamp on it however you want. And then you... Put it in a pile of stuff, and then when you are ready to um, put on your, you know, like your accessories on your, something like this, then you just take take this and use it like as a tag, as a, you know, whatever you want. I mean, just like an extra thing to to, you can stick it off to the side a little bit so that it sticks out. And you can use it more like an actual tag. You can fasten it on two sides and make a little tiny um, pocket to put something in. You know, whatever you want to do. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can do so many things with any kind of material because everything is just whatever you want to make it. There are no rules. So, that's what I like about it. I've never been one for rules. So, this one um, is a little bit of a strange shape. Let's see what we got for that one. Um, I have a lot of little, um, you know, stamps of all different kinds. Here's a, an old Tim Holtz stamp. I'm sure a lot of you have this. 
It's butterflies and moths. You can see that my stuff is very well used. Um, you know, it, it goes through the mill quite a bit. I'm going to try and hit the bigger one in the middle because it looks like that would be about the right size for this. So let's see if this works. And if it doesn't work, the nice thing is, who cares? I mean, you can go back with something else and cover it up or distress it in the shape that it's in. Like one of these wings didn't come out very well. So you'll just take something and kind of go over it like, whoops, <laughs> there we go. That was good. Like it was meant to be that way, you know, like um, that's what you really wanted to do even though that might not be what you really wanted to do, when you finish it up, it looks okay because you're like, oh, well, she must have meant to do that. Which, of course, now my secret is out and you will all know that I did not mean to do that. So anyway, the fun part is you get to create and do whatever you want with absolutely no rules. And that, to me, is very appealing. Here is an old stamp. Uh, I think that's a Stampin' Up stamp. I used to, my niece used to sell Stampin' Up, and that's how I got into all the stamping things to begin with. But it looks really cool to just run, you know, like some kind of script through the um, thing. So anyway, there you have like, a, a piece of cloth with a stamp that would be used to add to some kind of a project. And, um, you know, you can put anything. I've got these that I made the other day. Um, this was little tiny pieces of cloth that were just kind of a hot mess. And I just like put little bits of stuff on there and it'll just be like an afterthought. I mean, just something it doesn't have to be well done it just you know um it's just an afterthought it's just something to add to your project here's a number you know and um you just put it on and you can stick a button on it you can stick a pin through it you know whatever you want to do so that is that and then, like, um, sometimes I will just, um, I always keep coffee spray. This is my own concoction. The bottle is really gross, um, but it's coffee. And I have in here some, um, oh, what do you call that? Um, alcohol. Um, I think you call that <laughs> rubbing alcohol. And that keeps it from molding because if you don't do that after a few days, it will get gross. So if you put some rubbing alcohol in there, like, you know, I don't even know, a cap full or something, it will keep your um, coffee dye from molding. And then when you can't, like, if you don't want to go to the oven and do a whole bunch of papers or whatever, you can just... Um, I just will spray this on some paper and then I'll just set it over to the side and leave it and see what happens and see how dark it gets or whatever. And then when I'm ready to do a project, I'll find this paper that has been sprayed and it's all crunchy now and it's ready to do something else. And so you know, you like, I always am like thinking ahead or like if I made something and I totally screwed it up um, and I'm like, oh my God, that's so gross. What am I going to do? I just put it to the side like I don't even care about it and it never fails in a week or a month or whatever. I will find a use for it and it'll be like, oh my God, that's perfect. So this also, here is a tag. I think I got that from my friend Angel. And you see, it looks so brand new. And it's stiff and, you know, quite clean and lovely and all the things that some people want a tag to be. But I don't want a tag to be like that. So, in order to grunge it up, I will just take it and start bending it and folding it and 
crushing it and whatever you want to call it. Just wad it up in a ball. You can see my fingers have been, um, I have been dyeing ribbon and yeah, I, I've had my granddaughter all week because my son and his wife are moving um, to a city about an hour away from here and so they are trying to pack up and move and get the old house ready to sell and all that kind of stuff. So I have been very busy with my little granddaughter, although it's been a lot of fun. And um, so I haven't done much crafting at all this week. And that's really hard for me because I craft every day and I miss it. But anyway, these are things I do, like if I'm in the middle of a project or at the end of a project... And see, do you see how, how much that has changed? Then what I would do is like, um, get a, let me get a piece of paper here. I always like to have a piece of paper where I'm working so that, yes, I don't know, just, it's, it's my weird thing. So, um, I would take my, um, my vintage photo, um, ink pad and just kind of rub over this and it will pick up the lines that you made when you were wrinkling this and uh, do the same on the back and just, you know, get it nice and covered with ink, even the string, because you don't want a vintage looking tag with a white crispy looking string because that's dumb. <laughs> Then, after you get it like this, if you spray it, you can spray it just with water if you want, but it will activate that ink, and it will, like, make it, I don't know, start to age and run and look different. And so, um, do it on the back and the front. And this also weakens the paper a little bit, so it's not nearly so stiff. It kind of makes the fibers break down a little bit in the paper. So, after you've done all that, I mean, which is basically nothing, then you have this really cool, grungy-looking tag, and you let it dry, or you can use a dryer to dry it if you can't wait. I like to let my things air dry because it's just simpler. And then... Um, after that, you've got, um, this grungy looking tag that's ready to add to any kind of a project. And if you, you know, if you've got places that didn't get covered, you know, or something like you go ahead and, you know, take your ink pad and, and cover those. So this I will put to the side and eventually I will use it as a tag or something like that in my project. So, now, back to these cards that I started um, covering. You know, these are the cards I showed you at the beginning. And, you know, I just take pieces of, you know, when you do a project or a page or whatever, you cut off excess stuff. So, everybody, I know everybody has tons of leftover stuff, you know, like little bits of this and that. And when you have that stuff, you know, hang on to it because you can do so much with it. And like, um, this one, let's see, I'm gonna use this Tim Holtz guy here and, um, I'm gonna put him on here and it's okay if they stick out a little bit at the top or the bottom. It's not the end of the world. But see how his arm is out like he's leaning on something? You know, you can't leave the poor guy hanging. You know, um, you gotta, like, I don't like to leave people up in the air with, like, um, nowhere to stand. <laughs> I realize they're not real people, but um, let's see here. See, if you put this on here, it looks like he's leaning again. It looks like he has something to lean his arms against. This is just a, an old piece of music paper that I tore off to use on a different project. So, I'm going to take my ink 
and just ink up the edges. And, um, you know, again, you don't have to be careful. You don't have to be perfect. You just want to, I like the inked edges because I don't like anything that looks, I don't know, crisp and white and new. So, ink the paper up, then figure out where the guy's arms are going to rest when you put him on the page. I think this looks pretty good. So, I'm going to take my distressed stuff. And I'm going to put it on here. And then I'm going to lay it down and go over it a little bit. And the distress stuff, you know, as you can see, it really does change the look of the paper. But, and it's matte because I don't like the shiny. So, anyway, once you get it on there, you need to work out some of the lines because, you know, you don't want to see the brush strokes when your project is finished. At least I don't. So let me cover this up. There we go. Okay. So here is this and you can just tear this off and tear this off. Now this, I usually draw the line at something this small, <laughs> but I will keep this because that's something you can just... Sometimes when you're doing a project, you just have the need for a tiny thing. One little tiny thing can make so much difference in your final project. So, you know, don't, you know, underestimate the value of little scraps. And sometimes I take my finger, which is why my fingers always look like they do, but take your finger and just kind of rub over some of the stuff so that you don't have those marks. And like right here, it looks kind of bunchy, but that's just the from the wet um, uh, collage medium. And it will, once it dries, that will lay down flat. Okay, I have... I have this box over here, but I mean, you can't see it, but I have like tiny, do you see it says tiny miscellaneous ephemera. And I have all kinds of pieces of this and that and the other thing and little bits, uh, little tiny people. You know, I just, when I need a piece of something, um, like here's a piece, here's an old piece of some tissue paper we will just snap that right out of there. And sometimes, you know, you're like, what do I ever you going to use this for? But then, you know, something like this comes along and you're like, oh my God, that would be cool. So you see, I got this little bit of paper that says 66. I'm just going to tear that off and I'm going to, um, I think I'll put it down here. And, um, you know, like I said, there is no right or wrong. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it sideways. And I always like to make sure that my ephemera comes over the edge a tiny bit or at least right up to the edge because, um, you know, you don't want a square. I don't like a square, like this one's kind of square and I should have probably roughed that up, but I, I don't like it to be like this perfect line. I don't know. I it's hard for me to show you what I mean because a lot of my stuff is not a it's not a, a way that I do it it's a it's more like a feeling that I have and I keep doing it until I feel like what I want has been accomplished I don't know if that makes any sense but, like, when I do stuff like this, it's because I look at this guy. He looks like an old guy. Maybe he's, you know, men back then used to always wear suits and everything. Maybe he's going on a train to the city. I don't know. Maybe he's going on vacation. Maybe he's down at the old country store shooting the breeze with a bunch of old guys, you know, getting ready to play checkers. I have no idea. But... You, the nice thing is you can make him be whatever you want him to be. And I, 
ink him up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess I should show you what I'm doing. Um, I ink him up just like my other stuff. And I'm going to put him right down here. Let's, I'm going to cover him up with the same adhesive. Um, you can use anything you want. You can use Mod Podge. You can use glue. Um, I like this because I, you know, it just works well. But, um, and I've even made my own with just glue and water. So, you know, the nice thing is it's easy to paint something like that on. And then you can see that there are bunches of it around the thing. So I just take that off and smooth it down and uh, kind of, I don't know, work it into the paper a little bit. And uh, it's just added grunge, which I love. And, um, you know, he looks, he looks real dapper, <laughs> as they say. Well, somebody may say that, I don't know. So, okay, I got that done. I'm going to take a little Kleenex and wipe my fingers off. And then I will probably take, like, a couple safety, or, um, <laughs> God. Yeah, uh, but, pin, um, <laughs> so crap. Um, wait a minute, don't tell me. I know what they are. They are, uh, mm, paper clips. <laughs> God. I've had a long week. Okay, they are paper clips. They just hold the edges of your work down so that, you know, they can dry with the ink or whatever. And uh, so this, we're going to do that. And then, like, okay, I got a lot of these, oh, Tim Holtz stuff. Um, I love the snarky sayings, you know, but I'm not going to give him one of those because I don't think he looks snarky. He looks like... I don't know. He looks like an old man that's going somewhere. So I am... I looked through these the other day because I have got pages and pages of these. And if I don't look through them, you know, like ahead of this video, I would be here for the next hour trying to find the right... Um, the right thing to put on my, my work. So I am trying to... I got a paper clip here, but I'm not exactly sure which one I was looking at. Um, well, hmm. I don't know. He looks like he's traveling to me. So I'm going to pick out here the first step in the journey. Just peel that off. And I usually will take some ink around the edges of this just so it's not too white. Um, sometimes I save, you know, passages out of books that I'm reading or whatever, but we're going to put that right here. I'm going to actually put a little tiny bit of glue on it. Because sometimes after I have touched it, my fingers... Look at the back. <laughs> I've got crap all over it from my fingers. So a little tiny bit of glue is not a bad idea. Okay. So now we're going to put this down here. And this is the first step in a journey. You know, this guy can be anybody you want him to be. He can be a grandpa or a dad or a gambler or a lawman or whatever. But it's fun to to make up, you know, a story about them and be like, you know, I wonder what he did. I wonder where he came from. I wonder what where he's going. So I'm looking for another 
thing to put on there as well. Um... Car that's my <laughs> that's my dog Carlos um he apparently sees something outside that he doesn't like he likes to sit on the edge of my bed and bark at everyone that comes near my house so he is he's protecting me from the bad guys that's what that's what we say I'm like don't forget to protect me from the bad guys and he always does his best because I'm the one that gives him his food. And he definitely loves his food. Okay, I'm going to say lesson 175. Now, see, I don't know why I picked that. It doesn't mean anything to me. It just is just like something that you see and you're like, well, I like that for whatever reason so I took it out and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the back and then I'm gonna stick it under where I put the first step of the journey and then I need to find some kind of uh this is a little crookedy. That one's a little crookedy too, but that's okay. Um, I will probably use like this doesn't have really any ink to it, but let me see. No, I don't like that. Um mm -hmm. I don't, let's see. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. Just because I like it. And. Okay, now then, this is what the front looks like. Okay, and then I will take, like, uh, let's see here. Here is a little, little tiny key on a little safety pin. And I think I will just, I think I'll put it over here. I think I will just um, stick that on this piece of cloth. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to have to maybe do this without being able to show you very easily. Anyway, the point is... Hold on. This is not... This is not staying where it belongs. Now, stretch it out here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sew that so that it stays down, and then I'll be easier to put the pin in there. Anyway, on the back, then, what I'm going to do is I am going to make 
a pocket so that you can stick a tag in there or something. Um, I learned this trick from Michelle Mulligan. She um, showed me how to do this. You can use any kind of fabric or paper. Fabric has more give to it so that when you are like putting something on there, it will have a tendency to um, give a little bit like when you're trying to um, stick something in it. Here's an old piece of burlap. That would probably work. Um, let me see. I have a whole drawer also full of like old pieces of fabric, old bits of everything. I, I'm not kidding you when I say I have, have everything. So, um, I got this fabric, but I don't know if this would, I don't know how that would be for a pocket. I think it's too stiff. So, let me see here. Okay, here is some, like, I don't know what you call that. Um, this, I think it's Tim Holtz stuff. I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I'm going to sew around the edge with my handy dandy sewing machine to hold the pocket in place and also to make that one tag part lay down. So just give me a second. And I will be right back. You know, unfortunately, I am not good at doing videos. I'm not good at being the person that knows how to speed up a video and pause a video and put fancy things on a video. <laughs> so I am very basic in my knowledge of what works and what doesn't work in the technological field. And that makes my son crazy to no end because he's a director of technology at a university so he just can't believe that I'm so so slow at learning these kinds of things but it, they don't really mean anything to me you know I mean I just you know I do what I have to do but I don't really understand all the ins and outs of all this stuff so, okay, I'm done. Now, let me cut off the strings. Okay, now, um, on the back, um, we have this lovely cloth, which is way too clean looking for me. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, my ink pad and I'm going to grunge it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my coffee dye stuff and I'm going to squirt it. And just let it dry and it will become a lovely shade of grunge and then on this side I've got um, this little bit of stuff sticking out so I can now put my little paper clip or safety pin in here without having all that trouble of the tag falling apart so we'll just Close that on up. There. And then you have... Whoops. <laughs> I didn't get it closed. Okay. 
This is why I don't do tutorials, because then I have to let you guys see all the stupid things I do and all the mistakes I make. And yeah, okay. So here you have the front. And I feel like it needs something else up here. It needs, I don't know what, because it's too plain. So I have a box of like... Um, trinkets and buttons and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, um, these are some Tim Holtz. I don't know what you call them. I, I don't really like that because it sticks out too far. Um, maybe something like that. A big button. Um... Well, I've thrown th three things back and not one of them has hit the, <laughs> the tray. Okay, here's an old clock. That looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to take my ink. I would get nowhere without my ink. And I'm going to distress this clock so it looks a little bit rougher, darker. And then um, I'm going to get a piece of something, a piece of fabric or ribbon or um, let me see what I got here. Okay. Here is... A piece of seam binding that I just cut off and it's pretty grungy looking and I don't want to you know I don't want our thing to look not grungy I'm trying to see maybe it would be better on this side because I already got stuff on that side and maybe that's not the right piece um okay let's see what else we got here when I am working, I don't think about things like trying to show people what I'm doing. I just think about, you know, what what's actually happening in front of me. And then I'm just like, oh, crap, I forgot to... I forgot to make sure I was in, in frame. Nope, that's not going to work either. Okay, let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. Nope, that doesn't work. But don't. Fear, never fear. I will prevail. I will find the perfect thing. And this is why my crafting takes me so long. Because I just am not happy if I settle for something. If I settle for something and just put it on there, nine times out of ten... I will go back later and rip it off and be like, this is not right. I can't do this. So. Okay. This works. So, I am going to find a needle and thread. And this used to actually be my grandma's, um pin cushion and I used to um sit over there and I would like push all her pins way down when I was a kid <laughs> and she would get irritated because if you know what it's like to work with a pin cushion you do not want your pins pushed all the way to the base of the pin cushion the hard part here is finding the hole Okay. Let's try it. 
try that. You know, if something can be sewn on and held on by thread, you know, I mean, like a button is supposed to be sewn on. So if you can do it, I would much prefer seeing a button sewn on by thread than seeing it just glued on. But again, that's just me. And you know what? I mean, whatever you do is your choice, your decision. It's your project. I'm just giving you some ideas of what I do because somebody asked me to do that. And now I cannot find the hole again. <clears throat> so sometimes it might have been better to sew the button without the, um, you know, not on the card, and then I could have just glued it, but oh well. I think we got it now. There we go. Okay. All right, now we're gonna clip this. Tie it. Sometimes my fingers are so swollen doing things like tying or tying a knot or separating thread seems almost impossible. But we get her done. Okay. Okay, and here is kind of the finished project. Sometimes I go back later and add more stuff to it. I am forever doing that. Like even after I finish a book and even after I have sold a book, I will go back and add something to it. This is still not dry. This is the grungy thing that we started to do, but it will fit in there nicely as a little tag. And you can either let that go or like there's a split here where you can make the tag smaller, you know, and you can use the other part for another um, project. So anyway, I hope I've given you some ideas of what I do and I hope I haven't bored you to death <laughs> and I hope you don't hold it against me that I'm such a messy crafter, but it's just the way it goes. And Bunny wants to tell you something. Hey, you guys, it's me, your friend, Bunny. I want to tell you that Mom's got three books ready, three bunny books, and she's got to make the bunnies, and then she'll do a video. She was going to do one last week, but the weather was so bad, and she couldn't get to the post office if she sold them to get them in the mail. Oh, my goodness, we had a foot of snow. We couldn't even get the front door open. I'm not kidding. So, anyway, um, Mom's going to do a video soon, so watch out for my brothers. Okay, you guys take care of each other. Stay warm. Brrr, unless you live on the other side of the world where it's hot. Pant, pant, pant. <laughs> okay, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>